one lone manga artist who draws mostly lewd things in his art. Is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. The only thing is, he doesn't want his daughter finding out about his career and his mind for her sake. Instead of going over a borderline depressing show today, let's dig into a wholesome slice of live comedy by the name of Kakushi Goto, a series that is currently airing this season, and see what it's all about. This particular series will be from an anime-only standpoint and for everyone that hasn't read it. Fun little fact for everyone, the word Kakushi Goto has a double meaning behind it. One meaning secret, and the other meaning is work of drawing. That's a damn clever name for a series about a manga artist keeping his work a secret from his daughter, and it fits perfectly, so let's see why the series is as brilliant as it is. The first episode we see Goto Sensei, aka the father of Hime, his daughter, in the waiting room at the hospital when Hime is first born, and the reaction alone was heartwarming, seeing the big goofy smile on his face, only up until someone one points out that he is the author of a certain manga they're a huge fan of. No big deal, right? Except to him, it is, because said manga happens to be Balls of Fury, and you can guess it as well as I can what it's about. The interesting thing about this show is that while it is labeled a comedy, we also get to experience a more serious side to it. We jump back in time with Hime and Goto Sensei to when Hime was still growing up, but in the second episode when she is older and we're back in the present day, she was given a key to an old manga office we see in the previous episode episode. This time, however, it seems vacant and empty, and inside the closet where the boxes for Hime were kept, every year she got something new from her mother, but it only went up to 16 years old. However, when she goes back to it later on, she notices that it now goes all the way up to 20 years old. Also keep in mind that everything I just covered is just a brief overview of the first two episodes. So can you guess who made the boxes that go up to 20 years old for Hime? The mangaka for the series is Koji Kumeta, who is mostly a gag manga artist, meaning most of his work is comedy, with some of his works being Kate ni Kaizo, Sodate Darling, and the work that most people know him by, which is Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, which is his first work to be adapted into an anime series that was awarded the 31st Kodansha Manga Award for the Shonen category. Most of his works were continuously being published in the weekly Shonen magazine, up until Kate ni Kaizo was abruptly cancelled, which caused him to switch from publishing company Shogoku Kan to Kodansha, but as of 2014, he has gone into freelance work. What I find extremely interesting about Kagoshi Goto, however, is that it feels like we are seeing Koji Kumeta's personal life drawn into a different style story, and that's from the anime alone. From the struggles Goto Sensei faces in the show and how he deals with said struggles in a more comedic way is oddly enough really realistic, not to mention the subtle fourth wall break in a later episode where Goto asks this lady what she's doing at the sports festival with him, and she says that it's fan service. I love that kind of shit, but you also get a sense of how some manga artists can be treated in the world, and the personal story with Hime is just the icing on the cake. The director of this heartwarming anime, Kakushi Goto, is none other than Yukihiro Miyamoto himself. The reason behind me hyping this man up is because he was also the director of one of my all-time favorite series, being March Came In Like a Lion, which I may do a video on in the near future, so look forward to that as well. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you do, but only after Kakushi Goto. Miyamoto has done works in several amazing series that include Fate Extra Last Encore, Kiba, and the first season of my all-time number one series that is a 10 out of 10 for me, personally, being Bake Monogatari. With all of these shows that he's directed, we can tell that Kakushi Goto is a series we have to pay attention to more often than not, the characters themselves, as well as the storyline, so be sure to zone in when watching Kakushi Goto so you don't miss out on anything. The majority of Kakushi Goto is focused on the past where Hime is only 10 years old in an elementary school. With flash forward scenes seemingly at the end of every episode, where she is an 18-year-old high school student who is now aware of her father's secret. This shouldn't be spoiler territory either, seeing as you get a glimpse of it at the beginning of episode 1 and at the end of episode 2. Not only are the director and mangaka a great pick for the series, but it's also worth mentioning the sound designer for Kakushi Goto as well, this being Yukari Hashimoto, who did the sound design in series like Sankaria, Penguin Drum, and March Came In Like a Lion. So the man knows what he's doing, and knows he is doing a damn good job at it. So don't be one of those people who skip the opening or ending of the series, because those things are meant to be there, otherwise they wouldn't be there in the first place. Kakushi Goto is a beautiful comedy slice of life that I recommend you start watching. It is currently still airing, so you won't miss much if you catch up now. Or you could always wait until it finishes airing like a few people I know out there 
so you can binge watch it. Regardless of the direction you decide to go with it, let me know what Kakushi Goto made you think, and if you haven't started watching it, if you plan to. If you're a manga reader and you have read this series, is it a good read in your opinion? Because I may just have to pick it up myself. Forgot the poison.